Thank you, Dr. Fabian. Thank you, Dean, uh, for, for the intervention, to, to the invitation here. I'm very excited. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about a kind of different context so from what we're seeing today. Um, my work concentrates on informal settlements, or what some people call uh, slums, uh, that I define as self-built neighborhoods outside of city regulations in conditions of extreme poverty. Uh, the UN uh, tend to define these places as places that uh, lack uh, important services like water, uh, overcrowding, et cetera, et cetera, uh, the structural integrity of houses. Uh, so what I want to do talk today is about these kind of three ideas. Uh, you know what? One of them is, uh, is about how, how broad this issue is, how big it is. Uh, why uh, one of the most important issues is that uh, a lot of the presentations today have uh, benefit from uh, the wonderful time that we're living right now. There is a, a abundance of data, and actually, uh, this issue that you're going to see that is a little bit large uh, has the contrary effect that we have actually very little knowledge about that. There is a little uh, accounting of it, and then I'm going to end sort of with a proposition about how informal settlements are places for innovation. Uh, and this is just to talk about a little bit of the scale, to three moments in time, and it's shocking, talking the entire, showing the entire uh, complexity of cities, so uh, three different moments in time. And basically what it tries to say is that informal settlements are becoming the most in predominant uh, form of urbanization of the planet. You know, by the year 2050, uh, three billion people will be living in informal settlements. Uh, it would be, that would be half of the cities of the planet. Uh, what, what, you know, make this the most common form of urbanization of the planet? Uh, but the paradox is that's actually the one that we know the least, you know, because uh, a lot of the places where informality exists uh, don't have the resources to actually map uh, or to get data about these places. And sometimes even the institutions and governments uh, that have uh, the resources to do so uh, cannot do it because uh, it's impeded by their own regulations. Uh, to map uh, populations that live uh, illegally uh, within the boundaries of their countries or cities. Uh, so to try to deal with this issue, uh, I invented uh, with a, a group of collaborators uh, what I call the Atlas of Informality, that it tries to bridge that gap uh, between understanding uh, the scale uh, of the issue, try to map it globally, uh, but also to understand one of the most important uh, features of, uh, of, the, of this particular urban form, and is the, the condition that is always changing. It's an urban form that is always in flux. Uh, and so uh, we did, uh, with aerial photographs and, and direct mapping, uh, created this catalog uh, that is continuously growing that maps neighborhoods and look at these neighborhoods over time and how they are actually behaving and, and changing. Uh, result of that. So we've, what we found was something very interesting or something quite expected is that they were growing uh, uh, as, you know, the data is sort of suggesting uh, constantly. And so, and uh, more importantly, we find this, uh, this issue that the entire sample uh, is growing on a, at, at, a, at an incredible rate, you know, the 9.85% uh, uh, of growth annually. Um, so just to put that in, into, into context, uh, uh, it, it does is uh, 2,300 square kilometers a year. Uh, so you see that the little dot over there is uh, Central Park, just to give you an idea of the scale. So this means that every year, uh, out of the expansion of existing settlements, uh, one of the largest cities in the planet is created. So uh, larger than, than Moscow or uh, Houston or Tokyo. Uh, is created every year out of the expansion of existing settlements. Uh, and so this shows a little bit of uh, that kind of discrepancy between uh, what we found with our research, a little bit of what the UN is trying to say, uh, and that is seen actually a, a, a down uh, proportion of informal settlements uh, growing. And so I think it's a very important understanding of, of, of looking and, and creating this type of data. So one example that I wanted to show here is a, is a project that we did uh, trying to look about climate change and what the impacts of climate change is going to do to these particular places. So we're looking at the specific neighborhoods or across, across the entire world and, and trying to map how those neighborhoods actually were that 
are the ones with the less resources, uh, located in the environmentally more sensible areas, uh, the ones with the st structures are less prepared uh, for resilient mechanisms, uh, with lack of uh, any kind of uh, urban infrastructure, uh, are, we're going to cope uh, with those issues. And so we find, you know, uh, horrible places uh, that uh, neighborhoods uh, that are going to experience, like uh, Kaguri, uh, that is going to experience 77 more days uh, over 90 degrees. Uh, in a place where you know uh, roofs are made of tin of of tin um, of metal, uh, that are actually going to experience uh, 90 more days a year, uh, or uh, 77 more days over over 90 degrees. So, creating this data is important to understand uh, you know the resiliency of of those communities. Uh, but uh, one element that I wanted to uh, bring here, and it's sort of like when I, I switch the. Uh, the kind of perspective upon informal settlements is that uh, these are not only spaces of lacking, uh, but they're also places uh, for extreme uh, innovation. And so it's kind of a proposition that I'm, that I'm trying to generate here uh, about this idea that uh, uh, in informal communities, by living in conditions of scarcity, uh, need to be extremely inventive uh, with the few resources that they have. And so for that, I, I just have this kind of uh, uh, funny example. This is the United States with 5% of the planet that spends 25% of the ener energetic resources of the planet. Uh, this is China that has 20% of the population of the planet uh, that spends the other uh, 25%. And we know that China is trying to, you know, create parity with the West. Uh, what it will mean at some time China will, uh, you know, consume all, all the resources of the planet. We'll need another planet just for the United States and the rest of the other countries. Uh, but this happens uh, and it's because of this, because we are, we are trying to uh, emulate models uh, from the past century, and it's famous famously Corbusier had over his uh, three million inhabitants model. And on, on the left, uh, you are seeing uh, these uh, Chinese cities uh, emerging between uh, uh, Shanghai and, and Beijing on, on, the, on the train line. And what we're seeing is these models, uh, modern models of urbanization, uh, and the way that all, all our cities here in the United States are, are being designed uh, are, uh, are the models that are really destroying the planet. Uh, and so, and what I suggest is actually uh, the informal communities have this ability to adopt transformative technologies more quickly uh, than, uh, than us. And, and by doing so, actually uh, have the ability to, uh, uh, to help us. Uh, to search for new ideas. And so uh, the, the cell phone is one uh, ex excellent example of how, you know, uh, countries, developed countries, uh, were able to reach parity of uh, uh, telephone connectivity uh, with the entire planet. So we say places like Ni Nigeria, for example, that has the same uh, coverage that the United States, just by adopting uh, that new technology. Uh, and so, and there are all these new products uh, and projects emerging uh, to be applied in informal and poor places around the world. Uh, so for example, the Metro Cable, that is, uh, is this uh, transportation system in Medellin, Colombia, used on, uh, specifically for uh, resolving problems of transportation for informal communities, are ways uh, that uh, show how we could think in, in uh, infrastructure uh, less impactful uh, kind of interventions uh, to the betterment to the betterment of city, and so my proposition is this: is that this one third of the planet, by living in a scarcity and uh, adopting uh, new models of innovation, are actually uh, uh, opening the opportunity uh, to discover uh, new forms uh, that could actually help the, uh, uh, the the rest of our cities in, in in the developed world. And so one one example, final example that I wanted to present is that is that we have. Um, looking at these informal communities, they have created projects that we have adopted right now that are very transformative. And so these two examples I, that uh, are, are, quite, are quite interesting is, is for example, the motor taxis there, are these tax, this motor, that you, motorcycle that you use to transport somebody else and you use as a resource, that is this idea that you use your own vehicle as a way to generate larger levels of income and, and fulfill this kind of social uh, transportation system. It was invented in informal settlements you know, uh, more than 50 years ago and then it's sort of the model that is applied by the, you know, the ride apps that we're using. 
and, and this idea that uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, with, with, the, with the sharing economy uh, of that uh, we use our own asset as a way to generate income uh, is the way that actually uh, uh, units in informal settlements are self-financed. You know, like this radical idea that instead of getting a loan uh, to pay for your home, is your home the place that actually pays for the place that you live in? And that was invented in informal settlements almost 100 years ago. Uh, and, and so uh, my uh, interest is that there's all these kind of inventions uh, in the spaces of informality. Uh, there's all these kind of businesses and strategies that have been implemented uh, for decades already uh, that could be quite transformative uh, to the way uh, that we think about the planet. So uh, the final thing that I wanted to do is that uh, we need to make these communities more visible. They are part of our cities and, 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 and they deserve to be, to be accounted. Uh, and, and that uh, we need to pay more attention to that creativity that happened in these places. Uh, uh, n not only for, for those, uh, but because we also need finally to apply that creativity into our cities that really need to be safe. Thank you.